Week seven's, I think we could, you could argue about the most interesting game. I'm starting with Minnesota, who's 5-0, and against Detroit, who's 4-1. and We were laughing upstairs. This feels like a, co- a coordinator game, maybe, right? Oh. Flores and Johnson head-to-head. Dallas has looked, excuse me, Detroit has looked the part recently. In this particular matchup, what's most interesting to you? I want to see this against that. What? So, the injury to Aiden Hutchinson mm-hmm. is a huge blow to the Detroit Lions defense. I think he was on his way to being the defensive player of the year. He was leading the league in sacks, pressures. He was just an animal coming off the edge this year. How are the Detroit Lions, how are they going to compensate? You can't replace him. He's that valuable of a player Mm -hmm. on the field in the locker room. How are they going to compensate? Because we all know, Scott, when you play defense, rush affects coverage. You take away that, 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 that pass rusher, how is it going to affect it on the back end? I thought Tim Hasselbeck made an interesting point when he sat here on Sunday, as he's with us every Sunday night, that when Hutchinson went out, like one of two things could have happened. It could be completely deflating, or you saw a Detroit team that already showed up pissed off and wanted to make a point. They kept their foot on the gas. That yeah. that that was something that he he found notable. I think this Detroit team, man, I it feels like they got the right stuff cook around or just collectively. You feel the same? Yeah, they're built right. I mean, it starts from, you know, starts from the, the leadership. Brad Holmes, the general manager, and obviously Dan Campbell, the head coach. Mm-hmm. Those two, you know, together have really built a culture in Detroit. Seem like they can withstand almost anything. It doesn't matter where they play at home, road. They're built the right way. They're not built like a dome team. They'll build, they can play any style of football you want to play. This Minnesota team, though, I think if you look at resumes and you talk about who have you beat, because context really matters in this league, right? I mean, like, look at Pittsburgh. They got a nice record. Like, okay, well, who'd, who'd they beat? All right, I, I, okay, I get it. Minnesota's beat San Francisco. Yep. They made C.J. Stroud look as bad as he's looked in the league. I mean, they got wins. They beat the Jets. They beat Green Bay at Green Bay. So they got a chance coming off a bye to say, hey, listen, if you're still or asleep, like, it's time to wake up. What's most impressed you about how Minnesota's played so far? They are well coached on both sides of the ball. I mean, think about this. I know everyone talks about Sam Donald. Mm-hmm. He's a guy I've talked about many a time. Very talented guy. He's always had the bugaboo for turnovers. He comes to Minnesota, and look what Kevin O'Connell has done with him in Minnesota. It's just been outstanding. I always talk about with quarterbacks. What's your infrastructure look, look like sure. around you? Good offensive line, good running game, wide receiver. Yeah, I was going to say, where is number 18? <laughs> right. Where is 18? Right. I'll throw it to him. That's right. That's right. Along with the other guys, Jordan Addison and company. Sure. So, they got he got, they got the coaching in Minnesota, and I'm going to just bring it on back. Mm-hmm. That matchup between Brian Flores, defensive yep. coordinator of Minnesota, mm-hmm. against Ben Johnson. Two guys have I, got it cooking. They got it going on. Yeah, they do. That'll, that's, that's a really, really interesting game. And clearly – High profile, Super Bowl rematch, whatever. I always resist that because there's no trophy up for grabs when Kansas City plays San Francisco. It is interesting that Kansas City, who has not lost, is considered an underdog in this game. And again, it's all about matchups. The matchup in this game that you find most interesting is what? So, I mean, for me, it's a couple things. Number one, who's going to block Nick Bosa? I mean, not we, one dude. Not, 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 one, not, not one guy. One dude. <laughs> I think, you know, when you, when you look at Kansas City, and we, we talk about Kansas we, we praise them all the time. If there's one weakness on Kansas City, particularly on offense, mm-hmm. it's the offensive line their tackles. Mm-hmm. They're going to have a handful trying to block Nick Bosa. So I want to see what the game plan is with that. And then you look at it on, on the flip side, you know, with Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy has been playing at such a high level. Yep. But going up against the Steve Spagnuolo defense, mm-hmm. they're able to shut down the run. And the, the, the design of blitzes that he's able to come at quarterbacks with, that's the one area that bothers Brock Purdy a little bit. How is he going to be able to handle that Steve Spagnolo blitz package? And it's interesting for San Francisco. They've lost a couple of games both to the Rams and to the Cardinals that they let leads, double-digit leads get away. It's not like college where there's no wiggle room. But, I mean, you don't want to get four losses by the middle of October. So, I, it, I think it's – I don't know how much pressure there is on San Francisco, but is that reasonable to say when you've, when you've lost three games already, you, you get four losses. At some point, you put yourself in, in, in danger of being a team that doesn't make the playoffs even though everyone knows you're good. Yeah, it's not much wiggle room. I will say this because I think because their division – That's fair. You know, they, they, they do have some wiggle room in their division. But ultimately, if you're San Francisco, mm-hmm. you want to try you, – you're trying – you're competing to try to get home field. 
Yeah, you're trying to win a championship. You're trying to here. win a championship. Yeah. You already got Minnesota's undefeated and mm-hmm. Detroit Lions here. The whole NFC North is just, right. it's just all crazy. over 500. Yeah. All over 500. I think a lot of people would look at Stroud and Love and go, man, that's a sexy quarterback matchup. But there's a dude on Houston that you think, let's not miss his importance here. And who's that? Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon. We saw it early. We saw it in like week one. Like, the, the value that he brought, right. he came out like, whoa, like Joe Mix, Joe Mixon brought a different element uh, to this Houston Texans offense. He got hurt. He came back, you know, against the New England Patriots and look at the effect that he had in, in, in the away game against the New England Patriots, mm-hmm. both running the ball, catching the ball. The dude is, is lethal coming out of the backfield. So I think in this matchup, we got two outstanding quarterbacks. Joe Mixon might be the X factor in this game. And if we've got the time, I do. This is just, this, I don't know if it's an industry term. It's, B, it's B-roll. That's the <laughs> video that supports our conversation. If we don't have it, it's fine. It's just two guys chopping it up right. about football. Aaron Rodgers, I, I think, the last two games they played, they lose to Minnesota and London, right? Yep. And they lose on Monday night. Well, both times, coming out of that loss, there was gigantic news that took any conversation about his play in either game and put it to the side because the coach got fired, now Devontae Adams is there. At this point, if Salah was an issue for him, he says it's not, but if he was, he's gone. And if you needed more help, your guy, Tay, the, the, the numbers those two had in, in Green Bay were remarkable. Now he's here. You got everything you want. There's no more excuses, Scott. There's no more excuses. Listen, going back to last year, you brought Nathaniel Hackett here. Yep. You bought Randall Cobb. You yep. brought Alan Lazard. Yep. Okay. Now you you know you bring. <laughs> now you got your now guy. Now you tag. got your guy. You got your guy. Tag. What more could you ask for? He's literally the GM running this whole ship. No one wants to hear anything else. Mm-hmm. You got to go out there and get it done now. It's interesting though because so many people will 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 talk about like, well Rodgers doesn't have to be this the, he doesn't have to be MVP Rodgers which I think is fair because it, it, as you. He's coming off of an injury, and he's 40. But I think we've certainly seen glimpses where it's not like he's horrendous. They're not no. losing because of him. But at some point, when when this guy is brought in to be that guy, don't they have to win because of him? I, yeah, you you trade for Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, we talk about the Super Bowl aspirations. But there's been times this year where the Jets have had opportunities to win games at the end if Aaron Rodgers is able to make plays, and he hasn't been able to do that. And that's why, that's that to me, and, and this is something we've talked about on Countdown a ton, ultimately all these guys get paid that money because when it's a coin flip game and it's a two-minute drill, can you win it? As Patrick Mahomes has no peer in that situation. If the right. game's there to be won, he's going to win it. And Rodgers has certainly done it a ton throughout his career. I would just think... If he's going to be the guy that this franchise has mortgaged so much for, then with all the things that they've that they've got, at some point you've got to be the, they got to win because of you. And this Pittsburgh defense is like, okay, welcome to our joint. That the, the reason Pittsburgh's won so far is because that defense is insane. Man, I'm worried about T.J. Watt, bro. I'm worried. Listen, you can get all the shiny weapons that you want. But if you can't block, the, can't block. And you, those, no one can block ninety. No one. How about? Did you see him punch the two footballs out last week? It was insane. I mean, again, I'm just going to keep talking until my producer says shut up. If they switched, if they switch to Russell Wilson, you think that's a mistake? I do because when I watch Pittsburgh, their offensive line is a problem. And the one thing that Justin Fields could do mm-hmm. was cover up some of what's going on with the offensive line. With that, his legs. With his legs. Right. Now, I will say this. I think Justin Fields, the one thing that you can say about Justin Fields, mm-hmm. he hasn't been turning the ball over. And, and, you know, if you don't turn the ball over and you're playing good defense, isn't that kind of what we talked about, you know, in, in this game tonight? Like you, 100%. Right. If you do that, you can win football games. But there's some throws there that are out there that Justin Fields leaves out there. And I think that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers are counting on Russell Wilson to make those throws that that are being left out on the field. I just don't know because Russell Wilson is a diminished athlete playing behind, a, you know, an office line that's not Banged playing up. well. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you, and, and for those that are just joining us, we played the sound from Fields earlier. I, I couldn't have more respect. Oh my gosh. Twenty-five year old guy. Not, not that that's a child by any stretch of the imagination, but you've seen we've seen plenty of dudes in many a sport where if they get benched, they pout and they're sullen and it's everybody else's fault. That young man said, I could have been better. This is on, had I done better, this wouldn't be an issue. I, I mean, I can't imagine showing greater leadership than he did in that Scott, moment. Scott, it, it, I think it, it, it goes to show how much, how much this guy is, guy is revered. Mm-hmm. If you listen to how the people in the Chicago Bears locker room talk yep. about him and the, how guys in the Pittsburgh Steelers locker room talk about him, mm-hmm. this guy gets it. 
He yep. gets it. A lot of ways to be a leader. I think he was uh, in that moment. Damian Woody, as always, appreciate it. We had some room to go tonight. That oh, was good man, fun. We had, we had a runway, bro. Yeah.